Hi there, my name is Tomislav. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the Pro Max chip. It has 32-core GPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM with 4 terabytes of internal storage. It is in space gray color and let's start. I previously had the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro with the 6-core i7 processor and 4GB Radeon Pro 560X and 32GB of RAM. It also had 1TB of internal storage, so it was a decent machine, but it had some problems. First, it was really hot when you were working with it, so the fans were going nuts all the time and uh, the battery life was really terrible. So you can imagine how happy I was when I saw the keynote for newly released uh, MacBooks, especially considering that you were able to configure the 14-inch version with uh, the same configuration as you could for the 16-inch version. So it was like a lot of power in a small form factor. I really needed a small uh, laptop because I do a lot of hiking and I do photography assignments while doing it and I hiked like 25 kilometers. So every gram is important. I was even thinking about buying the uh, MacBook M1 Air since I was really pleased with my Mac Mini M1 but still the Mac Mini was struggling with a lot of video stuff that I was throwing at it. So considering that I had some bigger projects coming in my way I just decided to wait to see all these new devices. So I went with the 14 inch space gray version. I wish I went for the silver because it's so much better looking and it fits the new design language much better than the space gray color. I straightforward ordered the device because uh, I was pretty sure that considering the chip shortage and all the supply chain issues currently happening in the world, I would probably wait for a long time to get it. And boy, I was right. <laughs> I waited for my configuration for 88 days, so basically three months, that's insane. But luckily it arrived just a few days prior to one big project that I had and it helped me to have much faster workflow and to deliver my files to the clients much faster. I have to say the screen is beautiful. It has really nice colors and the contrast is great. 1000 nits of brightness is so welcome because I do a lot of my stuff in the outdoors struggling with the direct sun it is really beneficial and helpful i didn't even notice the notch uh, there was a lot of drama around it but i didn't have any problems with disappearing toolbars or something like that it really coexists with the uh, software really well so i i just didn't notice it one thing i also didn't notice is the high refresh rate i just presume that i don't use the apps where you do notice that even when i was plugged to another monitor like 42 inch lg that i work with it has 60 hertz refresh rate and when i work with my macbook i use both screens i didn't notice it which is good because i plan to replace the lg with the new studio display and i guess I'm not going to miss the 120 Hz, which a lot of people are missing on that display. The keyboard is really nice. It's much better than the 2018 model that I had. I do miss the touch bar. Yeah, I'm one of those. I think it was more versatile than the function keys and I just don't use the function keys and I just miss it. Regarding ports, that's one of the most welcome changes to a lot of people. I was really happy because of the SD card reader. I use it a lot and usually I only use my dongles for that. The HDMI port was welcome, but I had some problems when I was connecting it to my uh, TV, the Samsung TV. It just didn't want to send the sound to it. And I'm not sure why, because the iPad was doing it. So I guess it, the problem is in uh, MacBook. I presume they will probably address that in future updates, but 
currently it didn't work perfectly with the lg monitor it worked so i guess it depends on the monitor or tv that you use it with the magsafe i didn't really care about it i would prefer if it had like usb c port additional one instead of it or usb a even better for the old devices that i have now uh, i also noticed that the connection is really strong so depending on the angle that you pull the cord sometimes it just doesn't detach regarding usage i did notice a lot of improvements compared to my mac mini m1 and my old macbook pro especially regarding video editing regarding photo editing not that much uh, especially compared to m1 mac mini and even in some cases, I had a feeling that the M1 Mac Mini was performing better, but that could be due to the optimization of the software that I was using, and maybe it's still not well optimized for the M1 Max uh, chips. At one point, I was a bit disappointed, uh, but that's on me because I fell for the hype. At the first week after the release, there was a lot of reviews that were popping up everywhere and they left a feeling that like this device is so powerful that it will just chew through every file that i currently have on my computer and i have to say that was not true i got a lot of drop frames while working with the prores files from the ninja 5 and 5 plus uh, combined with the r5 and the r6 on the first project that i was doing and also I got some spinning beach balls, but I guess that's also because of the poor optimization of some plugins that I use. I especially noticed that the Color Finale plugin is uh, slowing down my workflow. I guess it's still not optimized well for the M1 computers. And if you really want to slow down this machine, just put noise reduction filter in uh, Final Cut and basically made my M1 Mac Mini shut down. It just just restarted so that's really hard on these devices so that's the biggest test i'm just waiting for the device that you can just put a noise reduction filter without any regret also when i was exporting photos i do have to point out that i do have a really different workflow than most of people that i know I go uh, from Adobe Bridge to Camera Raw. I do all my selection of photos in Adobe Bridge because I think it's much faster than the Lightroom. And also I don't like the library system of Lightroom. Uh, I prefer to handle all my files by myself. That's the reason why I use Bridge. For editing, I uh, first select the photos in Bridge. I do the metadata uh, if needed. and then later i go to adobe camera raw and i do my editing there it's basically the same as the lightroom but i think it works better with the photoshop so that's the reason why i do it uh, in cases where i just do a lot of photos i just batch uh, resize them through adobe bridge that uses photoshop for all the resizing and exporting and when I was doing that, I actually managed to get my machine to slow down. Although I was doing some other things while photos were exporting just to kill time. I was playing this game that's the Gaza Unchained. It's a pretty basic game. It's a card game. But I guess it's not well optimized for the M1. Or maybe they are just mining crypto in the background. But it did really slow down the machine a lot. And when I was doing the same thing on the M1 Mac Mini, it didn't have, I presume it's just the programs are still not well optimized for the M1 Pro Max uh, chips. Especially since my Mac Mini M1 never had those problems, I presume it's all about the optimizations of the apps for the uh, M1 Pro Max. And the biggest mistake that I made was going for the 32 core GPU version. I think that I would benefit more from going for the 24 core version, especially regarding battery life. Uh, considering that I saw later the testing that 
the max tech uh, channel has done the battery life is really not that great it's two and a half hours when i'm doing editing of photos or video and maybe three hours if i lower the brightness but in those cases especially if i'm working on the photos i really need my brightness up especially if i'm doing it uh, outside on the sunlight so i get maybe two and a half hours of uh, work which is not what I expected. Also, this device gets really hot. It gets almost as hot as my 2018 uh, MacBook Pro, so the Intel version, so it gets really hot. If I went for the 24 core version, I think uh, I wouldn't have those problems, especially the battery problem. I think I would get more than three hours for sure. And uh, considering the test that the Max Tech uh, channel has done, it seems that I wouldn't lose that much of power. I didn't get the power that I was hoping for and I lost the battery life. Also, I lost <laughs> 200 euros because basically if I went for 24 core version, I would still have 200 euros more. Although I think while, while plugged into electricity, I still get slightly more power, especially probably for the longer exports. I didn't lose totally, but considering I need the laptop unplugged, I would prefer to have a, a slightly longer battery life, especially considering that I plan to buy the studio with the M1 Ultra chip later this year, probably. Uh, I prefer to have a really decent desktop for my work. 24 core would be a smarter choice, but I just needed the machine as fast as I could get and I just didn't want to risk to later be sorry for not having enough power. To conclude, I have to say uh, I did make a small mistake by ordering too fast, but if, if I didn't do that, I would probably wait much more than these three months that I already waited. And I had a buyer for my 15 inch MacBook, so I wanted to sell it uh, before it loses even more of its price and I had these jobs coming up and my M1 Mac mini was just not up for the, those jobs and I didn't want to risk. I'm still really happy with the device. It's still really powerful for the small form factor that it is. It would be cool that Apple enabled some software optimization. It, it could turn into a MacBook Air regarding energy consumption when you don't need all that power and then if you need that power just allow you to choose when you need it that would be cool but i presume that's not possible or maybe they don't want to do it and also i would really love to see the high power mode that the 16 inch version has when plugged into the electricity because for some exports it would be really nice to have it because while you're exporting the fan noise is not that big of a problem so that would be cool to have apple please do it my advice is uh, for people that are currently looking for a new device uh, is always to wait for the reviews from people that bought the device and from people that are professionals and heavy users a lot of people that have done the first reviews like the the ones that got the device straight from apple i think they were overhyping it i mean it's a amazing device but they were showing it even better than it is i guess a lot of them were just afraid to be more critic because if they do it maybe Apple will not send them the device next time. So I guess maybe that was the reason or maybe they just don't do all their testing really well or their work is really basic and simple. I think most of them made the mistake just pushing those benchmarks because benchmarks are just not using the device in a long period. So you don't know what will happen when you do something for a few hours what a lot of people will do with these devices, especially us professionals. I just think that people that buy the devices and then do reviews are more sincere and they do it with more criticism. So if you're looking for a small form factor laptop for video editing, go for the 14 inch 24 core version. I think 
you will not benefit from 32 cores and if you're buying a laptop i presume you need the battery life so that's a better option and also i would always suggest to go for the max memory and uh, storage because you just want to future proof your device and if you don't need a small form factor then go for the 16 inch 32 cores for heavy editing and that stuff that's for video edit and if you're like heavy user just go for the desktop version for the m1 studio ultra i think it's a really good value and i think it's a perfect device for small productions and uh, freelancers that do uh, heavy video editing and if you're just into uh, photography i would recommend going just for the m1 uh, mac mini and uh, external monitor or just go for the macbook air m1 that's even better choice especially if you need a laptop or imac uh, m1 because i didn't have any problems working with the r5 files regarding photo files on the m1 and these are 45 megapixel files so i think if you buy those you're good to go for the next four to five years minimum so yeah that's a good choice and they can handle 4k video if you decide to go that way later hope this video was helpful uh, i did talk a lot if i saw this video before i made my purchase i would probably done it differently uh, so that's the point of this video to help you in your decision uh, so if it was helpful leave a like uh, and uh, if you are not subscribed and you went all the way here to the end subscribe please i will try to do more videos like this even better ones and if you really liked it please share it because sharing is caring and see you in the next one bye